Okay guys, we're gonna take a brief break from that. I have to actually send Junior to the store to get parts. They're not open on the weekends. Uh, we're gonna polish up the base. I'm gonna leave the main casting just the way it is. Just give it a very light wiping. I'm not gonna polish it up like I did the bowls. It's just a waste. We'll never be able to keep up with them. Keep up with it anyway. Uh, this is what we're working on. Okay. I hate having brake fluid anywhere near my cars. I need to know the bore size of this. And man, does this thing look old. If this thing had 500 miles on it, it was a lot. Okay. We need the bore size. A lot of them, they'll cast the bore size into it, but I can't find it. And there's a reason I need to know what it is. And other things we have to do. But let's see if we can measure the bore size. Let's pop off this back stuff right here. Well, I'll go over one or two things real quick. That's my brake light switch on my car. It is the silliest, most ridiculous thing in the world. I have had to go through 10 of these since I owned this car 10 years. Literally. Some of them last a month, some last years. As you can see, this thing is like clean. <laughs> Definitely a ridiculous setup. Basically, you slide this bellow back. Okay, and you have this little cup. And it's held on with this little retainer. Which, I should be able to get this with one hand. You definitely don't want to lose this. Because if you lose this, when your pedal comes back. Okay. Okay, there's the little tangs. When your pedal comes back, whoops, it could fall out. Now. On an AMC, it uses the same master for power brakes as it does manual brakes. In other words, they interchange, but they're not the same. One of them has a three quarter inch bore. One of them has a 15 16 bore. So I want to see what the size of that is. Okay, the only way we're gonna definitely know is to pull this little snap ring out and pull the plunges out. Uh, you guys might get a lesson on how master cylinders work. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't know. Uh, I'll explain why we're getting into this in a minute. Let me get my one and only pair of snap ring plies I have here at the house. And hopefully it fits. Okay, I pulled out the snap ring. And here we go. There's half of what's in your master cylinder. That's not what I'm worried about. We got problems. I got my tool zeroed out. I know it's gonna be hard for me to. Alright, we, we zero. I think we're about to answer our question. Make sure we got this right. 936, 938. Best I can get out of it is from what I could see. Nine thirty-six. Yeah, I got 940 out of it. 940 sounds more like 15, 16, so I'm going to have to look it up. But it's not three quarter. So that would be 750 thousandths. Here's where the trouble starts. There's the wrong master cylinder for the car. This is for power brakes. And with that, I'm going to get some paper towels. I'm going to clean up this mess and we'll talk in a minute. So there's two bore size choices for my car. This is all the same, the gizmo's all the same, they both fit either one, okay? It's 24 millimeters for power brakes, and it's three quarters of an inch 
for manual brakes. So, 24 millimeters is 945. I was getting 941, that's close enough, that's 24 millimeters. Okay, uh, 19 millimeters. Roughly three quarter, roughly. See how hard it is to do this? Which would be seven hundred and fifty thousand. So this is what I'm supposed to have in there. Okay. Not even close, guys. This is what we're talking about. Can you see how much? Here's why I'm explaining it, guys. Okay, basically what this says everywhere you can't see is if you have a brake pedal that's 6 to 1 ratio, okay, so that means from the pivot point, the word pivots, if you measure down one inch here, and then you have your master cylinder, then you go six inches more, that's six to one. Okay, we understand that, right? And they're applying a hundred pounds static to it. This is just a test to show you how much pressure the seals are going to put out or the bore is going to put out. A three quarter inch master cylinder puts out 1359 PSI. If we drop right down to a 15 16, I'm down to 870 PSI with the same effort. Okay. Obviously a one inch, one and an eighth. The reason I looked this up is A, the brakes always sucked on the Concorde. Always, always way too much effort to get this car to stop. Okay. Now you can see why. Okay. And B, um, I need to convert one of these master cylinders into a four wheel disc master okay um which isn't a big deal but i looked to see if there were other manufacturers that already had a four wheel disc with my size bore and they don't that that i could find the closest thing i could find was i found the 15 16 in a four wheel disc brake master the most common is a one inch is what you could find which would have the same back back here um i'm not sure about the depth of the hole for the push rod Okay, I'd rather stick with something that bolts right to the car. I don't mind modifying stuff, trust me. Um, this obviously isn't the original master for this car, but if you look, the brake lines come out on this side. This they come out on the opposite side. Do I care what side they come out on? No. I'd prefer them to come out on the fender side, then they just add it away. Um, so a 78 Concord master cylinder is supposed to be three quarters of an inch on manual brakes. Somehow I landed a 15 16 which is a couple of sizes too big. You pass 13 16 7 8 and right to 15 16 That's why the pedal only goes down about this far, and the brakes are rock hard and they stop like shit. So there's more calculations than that to it. Um, now you would say, why did I use three quarters of an inch and in a Corvette, for example, because I looked into the Corvette Masters for a 67 to 79 I think it is manual on the manual they run an inch on the power they run 1 16th so why do they run a 1 inch that's all based on um, the amount of volume they need to fill all the caliper pistons and the ratio of the pedal so I'd rather stick with my original ratio stick with the correct size bore with my original front calibers the only thing altering is the rear um, calibers, and those pistons are pretty tiny. So we could do some calculations to find out how much this pedal is going to drop or rise, but the bottom line is if we switch to a three-quarter, I'm going to be adding 500 PSI with the same 100 pound of pedal effort by not doing anything. The pedal will be a little bit lower because it's a mechanical advantage, there's a mechanical disadvantage based on what we're talking about um but i've got like a foot of paddle, pedal travel as it is 
because manual brakes the pedal sits really high and that's one of the reasons why um, so we're going to modify a new master sound we're going to order up a new one I mean, I was going to order a new one anyway but I wanted to confirm that my theory was right and it was I will put this back together and get it out of the garage um, and then we will talk about how we go about converting this to a disc brake I might do it to this one so um, well, that's it now this is the not the right way to take the seat out unless you're replacing it way okay one of the nice ways to do it is to put a little grease on the drill bit and open this thing up and run a 6 by 32 inch tap on it holding the thing to the side then you put a 6 by 32 screw in there with some washers and you pop it out and then you can actually reuse it okay but this one I'm not worried about these are the rear brakes rear brakes are in the back front brakes are in the front on this master yours might vary what you're looking for is the residual check valve which is not there there's no residual check valve in that hole now I did a little research on it I knew about the residual check valve that's not what I did the research on uh, I was doing research on a couple of things and Cardone I think it is which is a very big remanufacturer of uh, water pumps and master cylinders claims that they haven't put the residual check valve back in in years in years basically that's the thing you need to remove to run one of these masters as a full wheel disc brake master because the residual check valve holds between between 10 and 12 pounds of brake pressure to keep the seals in the masters in the mess on the wheel cylinder inflated and out okay so when you take your foot off the brake and the fluid tries to go back into the master cylinder through the compensation port okay when the lip seal passes it all it all bleeds back until it works its way down to like 10 psi and that's all the love through so this line has 10 psi on it at all times your front disc breaks it all bleeds back or else the cowl will stay binding the only thing that releases your front disc brakes is the actual square cut seal on the piston because it bows when you apply the brakes and then when you let go the seal straightens out and pulls it back that little hair so your front brakes move like paper thickness okay and it's the seal that pulls it back and if you left the residual check valve in a disc brake setup the seal doesn't have enough effort to pull it back and your brakes drag so when we get our new master cylinder there's easier ways to check it I just wanted to pull it out okay um basically you could put fluid in the port if the fluid runs through into the reservoir there's no residual check valve it's as simple as that guys so we learned a lot here today there was no residual check valve in this master cylinder the bore is too big and that's why my brake sucked so we will order what we need to make this right <laughs>